I've been asked to do some examples for levels 3 to 5 for the SATS papers, and on this level I'm going to do four of them. All of them, however, will be without the use of a calculator. The important thing to remember with all questions is to make sure you read the question before you launch yourself in there. So, let's have a go with this one. Here are five number cards. Use three, and it's in bold, use three of the number cards to make this calculation correct. Right, so I can only use three of these cards. If we have a look at the cards themselves, four of them contain fractions. So that means it's not going to be easy. I need to use three of them to make ten. Here I have a pair of brackets, so this bit will be done separately. A multiplication by another card. Now, me personally, multiplying by fractions just is a bit of a nightmare. So I would try and choose to use this whole number to multiply by. So if that is going to go into there, multiplied by 2, I have to say to myself, well, times by 2 to equal 10, then this bit must be 5. 5 multiplied by the 2 will equal 10. But how can I get this bit to equal 5? So, I've got to add two of these remaining cards to give me 5 in here. How can I do that? Well, if I take the 1 and a half and add it to the 2 and a half, what will that give me? Well, the 1 whole one and the 2 whole ones, that would give me 3. And a half there and a half there, well, that would give me another one. That would give me 4, so that's not enough. What about if I take the 1 and a half and the 3 and a half? What would that give me? Well, the 1 added to the 3 would give me 4. And the half here and the half here added together would give me another 1. So that would give me my 4 and my 1. So indeed, those two cards in there, 1 and 1 half, and 3 and 1 half, would make this calculation correct. This bit equals 5, multiplied by 2 equals 10. Let's have a go at this question, remembering again to read what it says, what it's asking for. An iced cake costs 10p more than a plain cake. Sarah bought two of each, and here they are. They cost one pound altogether. What is the cost of an iced cake? Not the whole lot, an iced cake. Well, in this example, the diagram actually gives us a bit of a clue. The whole lot costs one pound altogether, so that added to that equals my one pound. So that bit there must equal 50p, one cake of each. This bit here must equal 50p. How can that help us? So if I take part of this and put it in here, remembering it says here, show your work and you may get a mark. So it's important to try and put something in here. So I can actually say that an iced cake plus a plain cake equals 50p. Now it also tells me that the iced cake must be 10 pence more than the plain cake. So how can I make these equal 50p where that is 10 pence more than that? Well, an easy way to make 50p is to say 30 pence plus 20 pence equals 50p. It's equal to my 50. And indeed, that then means that the iced cake is 10 pence more than the plain cake. So therefore, the cost of an iced cake is indeed 30 pence. This question is a good one, as there are quite a few different possibilities. Let's read the question again, though. Three different, again it's in bold, different numbers add up to 40. The numbers are all even numbers. Each number is less than 20. Write what the three different numbers could be and it has to equal 40. Now it's easy to add up in 10, so I'm going to start there, I'm going to say 10. Now indeed, that is less than 20 and it's an even number. So if I've got 10 there, then these two added together have to be 30 in total to give me my 40. So these two here, when added together, have to give me 30. Now I could say, well, how about 15 and 15? But that doesn't satisfy these bits here. Yes, indeed, they are less than 20, but they're not different and they're not even. So I can't use the 15, but I still need to make 30. This does give me a clue. Well, how about if I go one above and one below 15? 14 and 16. Will that work? Well, indeed, they're less than 20. They're both even. And if I put them in there, indeed, that will give me my answer of 40. 
This one's a tricky one. Let's read the question. It's worth two marks. Liam makes a sequence of numbers starting with 300. He subtracts 125 each time. Write the next two numbers in Liam's sequence. Now with this, you can always use the space here to draw yourself a number line. So, Liam starts with 300. He subtracts, takes away 125 to get himself to 175. He then repeats that, and he will end up at 50, taking away 125. Now, if he takes away another 125, which he needs to do, he's going to jump over the zero point. So he will end up in the negative region of the number line, the minus. But what will that be? Well, of this 125, 50 of it, using 50 of it, will get you to zero, which will then leave you 75 to get you down to here at minus 75. Now we need to repeat it. So, taking away another 125, can we break this down and make it a little easier for ourselves? Well, yes, we can. If we say to ourselves, right, let's go from here and subtract another 100, well, that will get me to minus 175. I still need to subtract another 25, which is in there, and that will actually get me then to minus 200. So those are my two numbers here and here. So that would be minus 75 and minus 200. I hope that helps.